Hi everyone and welcome to the Pup Mommy. This is a channel where it's all about the pups. They come first. So if you're a first time dog owner, a wannabe dog owner, or even an experienced dog owner, I'm here to be a practical resource by offering suggestions and advice of what I've learned over 30 years. So when you wonder, am I the only one with this problem? Or does your dog do this? Or just simply, how can I find the right dog for me and my family? video is the seventh in an eight-part series, To Puppy or Not to Puppy, that deals with eight questions that I ask and you answer to help you decide if you're really ready for that puppy. And so if you're about to detonate that adopt button, take a few minutes and go through these videos with me. And I promise you that by the time you're through, you should honestly be able to answer whether or not you're ready for a puppy. Today's video deals with question seven. Are you ready for the cleanup and the maintenance and occasionally the costly repairs that you might encounter when owning a puppy? Now, puppies have accidents. In fact, adults' dogs do as well. But ask yourself if you're really ready for the continuous cleanup, not only in the yard or elimination areas, but occasionally in the house. Now, I touched on it a little bit in the last video um, regarding the time commitment that a puppy takes. But here I'm referring to the actual environment when owning a puppy, your home indoors and outdoors. And there's a difference between when the puppy is healthy and when the puppy is sick. So are you ready for the continuous clean, kind of like when you have children? or even yourself, your husband, your significant other. Um, unless you get a puppy that does not shed, and there are certain breeds, you're going to need a really good vacuum. And if you don't have one, get one. And depending on the breed you select, <laughs> you could be vacuuming every day on a daily basis. If, if you're not doing that already, if you're not in the habit of doing that already, you will be. You know, because I'll tell you, my pups, whether they're Shepherds, Dobermans, Lab, Bostons, I mean, they shed all the time. They really do. Certain times of the year they shed more or less, but they shed all the time. And having one pup versus three pups like me, which may soon be four, um, make all the difference in the world. It just depends on you and your tolerance in your home and, and really what you can tolerate in terms of how clean and, you know, the cleanliness that you, what you can live with. Now, the shedding also equates to dust. And that dust can seem to be on a little bit of everything in the house. So that means that you are going to be doing a little bit extra dusting in addition to the vacuuming. And for those of you who are in outlying areas, one of the other things you're going to be, or in, you know, outlying areas, meaning if you're in the outlying suburbs or you're in a rural area, then one of the other things you're going to be worrying about or thinking about is the possibility of your pup getting skunked. Now, my pups have been skunked, I want to say, three times. And the first time that it happened was so bad that I had an ozone machine in my basement for two weeks trying to get the stench out. Fortunately, I was able to take the pups to the groomer, <laughs> poor groomer, oh God, and they were able to get the stench out of the pups. Now, um, your washing machine may not be going every day uh, because of dog items, but you'll have to occasionally wash the dog bedding and your own bedding, especially like for example, if, if you have dogs that sleep on top of the covers. Um, I, my little Boston sleep atop my covers and I'm washing the bedding a minimum of three times a week. Um, again, because, you know, I call my little thumper a little stinky. <laughs> and, uh, and then they also, as I said earlier too, they, they're, they're shedding. So my bedding gets washed a minimum of three times a week. 
Then you add in the furniture throws if you allow them on top of the furniture. And, you'll addition, and additionally, too, you're going to have to wash the collars and the harnesses and the leashes, you know, especially when you have in that fall and winter time. And, the, you know, and if you take your dogs and you, they go on activities with you, um, you, you know, it's just simply something that you will come to think about or, or will come to do naturally is what I'm trying to say. And then in the winter time, if you happen to live in that area of the country, um, you're probably going to have the occasional dog sweaters and the dog coats, um, not to mention the dogs themselves that you'll occasionally have to clean, uh, or taking them to the groomer. And of course, in the fall and winter, and not fall and winter, in the fall and springtime, uh, we also come down to that, are you ready for the mud tracks that the dogs are going to bring across your floor? I think there's a commercial out where there's a, a dog that, you know, follows the little munchkin into the house and all, they're both full of mud. Well, that's something for you to, to think about. It's always great if you can confine that mud to the utility room. For me, that has never worked out that way. So in the spring and the fall, be prepared for those little mud tracks on the floor and that little extra bit of mopping. Now, if your dog travels with you in the car or the van or your RV or you just, you know, that's another area for you to clean. Uh, you got dog hair, you got paw prints, you got nose prints. Uh, and then, of course, um, we have the yard pickup. Uh, you can hire somebody to come in and do the pickup. Or you can delegate it to another member of your family, like my neighbor does next door. Um, however, if you're someone like me, um, you know, without getting overly gross, I happen to like to do the pickup myself because it enables me to see uh, what is going on and it enables me to see, you know, what are, what, what are they eliminating and also is there the possibility that there's an underlying problem that I should know something about. So, with that said, the next question, there's always more. Are you prepared for the usual, if you're prepared for the usual waste materials, are you also prepared for the diarrhea and when the dogs throw up? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it, it, it's an ew subject, but it's a fact of dog ownership. And are you prepared and can you handle the situation when that dog throws up on your furniture, on your carpet, on your bedding because then that's the real test of puppy ownership. Uh, it's one thing if your pup gets sick on the floor and let's say okay you have a wood floor, you have a tile floor or it's the garage floor or it even gets sick on a leather sofa okay or a, a, something that's vinyl or whatever. To me it's kind of an easy cleanup. Is there any kind of cleanup that's easy? But in these instances, you spray it, you wipe it, you buff it, you hose it, and you're good to go. On the other hand, what happens if your dog gets sick on the carpet or upholstered furniture? Or they get sick behind a chair or a sofa or somewhere where you don't catch it for a, for a couple months. And when you do, then all of a sudden you discover that whatever they were sick with is permeated into the carpet or the wood floor. Are you prepared for that? Are you ready for that? And of course, <laughs> last but not least, are you prepared for what your puppy is going to be chewing and what the puppy may chew, actually? Because cleaning and maintenance also means everything that the puppy is coming into contact with. And in their chewing phase, and this could possibly go into behavioral issues if not addressed early, they can chew furniture, they can chew cushions, they can chew deck railing, they can chew sterilizers. And I mention all of this because this has happened to me in 30 some years. My lab mix was incredibly destructive when he was a young pup, and you can have, eye, you have eyes around 360 in your head, and you're, you're still not going to catch him every single minute of the day. And I actually remember going to a puppy training class, and there was a couple that came in with a Rottweiler puppy, and as we were talking, they related um, that their Rottweiler had eaten through the screen door. So bottom line, this stuff happens. And Bottom line, with this video, as with all the others in this series, 
I come back to the question, are you really ready for a puppy? And the whole point of this series, to puppy or not to puppy, is for you and any other member of your family or friends who's going to come into contact with the puppy to know exactly what you are getting into so you're not caught by surprise. And then the puppy is given up to the shelter and then there's crying or there's guilt or there's frustration or there's anger and it makes for a bad situation overall. So I want to thank you for watching and hope that you were able to find some help in this video as well as other videos in the series as you make the decision whether or not to bring a puppy into your life. If you would like some assistance in deciding what would be the best puppy for you or you have questions or you would like to talk one on a one-on-one -on -one basis, I'll leave a link in the description uh, for my contact information. And also, as I have with all the other videos in this series, I will leave a link to a, vid a video, The Gift, which has over 39 million YouTube views. And it's the story about an adoption which started out very happily and then went south. So if you are serious about adopting a puppy, this is a must-watch video. So, please join me for the next installment, the final installment, video number eight. Are you ready for the expense of owning a puppy? It will be an eye-opener. So thank you for watching. Leave your comments below. And don't forget to click that subscribe button. Thank you again. Bye for now.